and badging video for our large metal shop drill press. So a drill press is used when you want to drill a hole generally, uh, and you want it to be in a really specific spot uh, and really straight versus doing um, drilling a hole by hand where it can sometimes not be quite straight or if you're drilling a big hole, uh, you don't, especially metal, you don't have the strength to, to hold that drill and push with as enough force that is, as is needed to drill through the metal oftentimes. Um, so this is like a, 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 a pretty good metal drill press. Sort of the next size up would be one that has an auto feed. So that would be if you want to, especially for drilling holes and it's a really big drill bit and strong metal, it automatically feeds it down with a lot of force. Um, this one doesn't have that, it's just like a big, relatively simple one. So that's kind of what it's for. You can use it also for reaming, you can use it for holding taps straight. Um, you can, yeah, use it for a lot of different things. So we'll just go over the anatomy of it quickly so you know what the pieces are. This is the chuck, which is pretty important. So the chuck holds whatever it is that you're putting in it, normally the bit. And this is a pretty big chuck, so I think it goes up to three quarters of an inch. Um, it was made in Hartford, Connecticut, once upon a time, and uh, yeah, in my memory is it's an eighth of an inch to three quarters of an inch. So if you want to go smaller or bigger, then you might need to find another tool. Uh, and then there's the chuck key located on the side over here. So this chuck key uh, goes right in here and it's used to tighten and loosen the tools. And it's a safety chuck key because it has this spring. So one of the dangerous things about a drill press is tightening this and then accidentally leaving it in here, turning it on, and this comes shooting out. Um, and this can get stuck in a concrete wall. So to prevent that, this just has a spring, so you can't accidentally leave it in there. It just pops itself right out. Then up top, we have the belts. And so this takes the spinning of the motor on the back and changes the speed. So there's a little chart on the side that we'll look at in a little bit, and that changes the speed to whatever we want it to be. So I'm to you know that's there. This is the table for the bed. Uh, we want to not hurt the bed, so if you're drilling through a piece, you want to make sure to go through the hole. Um, and then we can change the height of the bed. So first we have to loosen it up on this side. So we're just going to loosen this handle. That was really on <laughs> And then the handle on this side is used to raise and lower the table. Um, so this could go all the way down. You could also, if you think something really big, just spin this right out of the way and, and mount the thing right on the base down on the floor. So we're just going to put that back. I'm going to raise it back up to some normal size drill bit will work for it. And open this guy so it doesn't spin on us. So those are most of the pieces. Uh, and then, well, this is a pretty important one. So this lowers the quill. So this is called the quill. Um, and it brings it up and down for us. So that's a, that's a pretty good one. Then uh, we're going to look at different kinds of bits that we can use. So we're just going to go over here. And there are four different kinds of drill bits. Um, most metal and wood drill bits are pretty interchangeable as long as they aren't the pointed kind that you use in metal work, or woodworking occasionally when you want to get right on a point. That would just destroy it. So the kinds of bits we have here, these are fractional indexes. So if you want a fraction of an inch, that's what these are. These are numbered bits. So if you want a size 33 bit, for example, then you might find it here. Obviously we don't stock every size, so if you want something in particular, you might need to go to Goody's Hardware or a McMaster or order it online. Uh, and then these are letters. So um, there's just different ways of sizing drill bits, and we can look at a chart in a minute that'll help you figure out what sizes you want, but that's where the drill bits are, and those are end mills, so those are a little different. There are other types too, so this is a countersink bit. So occasionally you have a countersink uh, bolt, you want to sit flush in a piece of metal, and so this will make that shape, and it should tell you the angle. This is an 82 degree countersink. Um, so there are a few of those in here. And there are also center drills, which we'll touch on. So we'll go over here. And um, oftentimes a drill bit has a chisel tip. And that means that the tip of it isn't actually sharp. 
So what you need to do is start the hole by using this drill, and that makes a little hole for that chisel tip to go into, so it starts really center, centered on, your, on that point. Um, another thing is that the length, the longer a drill bit, drill, drill bit is, the more flexible it is. So this is obviously really short, and that means it's really stiff, so it's not gonna bend. So when you make your mark on this, it's gonna stay exactly where you think it is. So that's pretty useful, so we'll hold on to this for when we're drilling. Um, and another tool you can use is a center punch, uh, which is right here, and what this is for is for making a mark in a piece of metal so that it starts in the right spot. Otherwise, the drill bit can walk, which is where you put the drill bit on and it just kind of swirls around a little bit and won't stay in one spot. So this just makes a little divot in a piece of metal. So we'll take these two over to the drill press uh, and drill something. So another accessory they can use is a vise. So in the wood shop, occasionally it's okay to drill something where you're holding it by hand. In the metal shop, that is never okay. You always need to make sure that the piece is clamped by something other than your hands. So, um, and, and the reason for that, also the reason why this is a buddy tool is because if your piece of material came loose, this is a huge motor and a piece of metal is just gonna cut you in half. So you really need to make sure it's not moving. Um, there's a lot of force involved in cutting metal and it, your body is not gonna be able to withstand that. So if you wanna clamp it using clamps directly to the table, that's great. Another option is the vise. So we'll just grab that, show you what that looks like. It's pretty heavy. And I'm just going to wipe off the bottom so that it sits nice and flat. This off. And just clear the chuck. So for this, you can put it on any number of ways, uh, depending on your piece orientation and whatnot. Um, and then these bolts clamp it down into the table along with these wrenches. So you would just use these wrenches and nuts and bolts and fasten it right to the table. Um, and so the way this vise works is you slide this to your piece, you push it up against your piece and then clamp down and that locks it in place. That's how, that's how that vise works. Put that back up and down. And so we're going to grab a piece of metal from the scrap area. Um, so this is all metal scrap that we're taking. And um, we're going to just find a, a piece of metal to cut. Um, let's see. So maybe... So this is a piece of aluminum um, on the aluminum part of the shelf. And this, let's say someone wanted to use this piece, like this little corner isn't going to be very useful, so we'll use this piece. And now we need to figure out how to clamp this. So what we're going to do is, uh, we could use the vise. Alternatively, we can grab a clamp that's going to go through this hole and clamp it in place. So I'm just going to go grab that clamp. So I grabbed some clamps so you can clamp this down, and these just go right in the grooves of the table. And then you can clamp down just like that. And so we're going to grab a drill bit to use now that this is clamped in place. And we'll just put another clamp on there for good measure. So I got the piece clamped here with two clamps, so it should be good and secure. Um, and we're just going to make sure that we loosen this up a little bit. So this is over the hole. There we go. And now we're going to grab a drill bit. We'll go back to the drill bit department, uh, and we can use just a 1560 ports. So why not? It's nice and sharp, so that you can just feel the sharpness of a bit by rubbing your finger over it. Yourself. Um, and then um, we're going to use this center drill just to get the get the point um, started. So this is actually probably a little bit big, but that's okay. So we're gonna load this up in the chuck, and the way you know which way to tighten the chuck is if you imagine looking up at it from the bottom, it tightens righty tighty lefty loosey. So that's how you know. Looking at it from the top, it's backwards, so you just have to visualize looking at it from the bottom. There you go. And we're gonna use the chuck key, 
check key goes right in these holes and you just twist to the right and you can turn it and get it in each of the holes just to make sure it's nice and snug because you really don't want it moving. And then we're going to look at the gears to make sure it's at a good speed. So on this chart, it's going to tell us what size you want. So we used uh, about a quarter inch drill bit and then we are cutting into aluminum, which is right down here. So we're going to go aluminum over to quarter inch, which looks to me like 3800, which is pretty fast. So that's revolutions per minute, RPM. And now we're going to come over to this side. And we're going to see that this drill press doesn't even go up that fast. But it does go to 2020, so that's where we're going to put it at. So we're going to open this up, and this is the hardest part. So we're aiming for 2020, and this shows <laughs> the year, just realized, in case you're interested. And so it shows the belt is going to be on the left in the top position, and on the right in the, in the bottom position. One, two, three, yeah, the third down from the top. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So first we're gonna loosen it. So you take these blue knobs, turn it to the left, and same thing on the other side. And then you're gonna take this and pull it in and it pulls the motor to slacken the belts. So 2020, we're gonna move this up. Just like that. And then on the right side, it's in the bottom ones, that's good to go. So we're gonna tighten this by pulling it back so it's nice and taut. And while you're holding it, tighten both of these knobs. Okay. So it slackened off a little bit while I was doing that. I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, I'm gonna close this up. And now we should be good to go. So I'm gonna turn on the tool. And we have the center drill loaded, and we're just going to put a little cutting oil on it. Uh, oftentimes for aluminum, people use WD-40, use whatever you want. Um, some people say don't use, use anything, so there you go. So we're going to turn it on here, obviously, and, and just to reiterate the safety stuff for the drill press, you need to make super sure there's nothing that's going to get caught in this. Uh, some people say this is the most dangerous tool because it's exposed on all sides. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for anything loose on your body, shirt, sleeves, tie, whatever, to get caught in this wrapped up and you'll have a really bad day. So you need to make sure that there's nothing that's going to get caught in there um, before you get started. And again, that there's a, there's a buddy in the room. So you're going to turn it on. And that's what 2020 RPM looks like. And for this, we're just going to make a little divot for the next drill to go into. to go and you don't want to be too shy uh, so to make sure that you form a chip you need to make sure that you push with some force um, those are these little chips once you get drilling into a bigger hole then you can do what's called peck drilling um, where you push to form a chip these long continuous chips but sometimes they get really long and start squirreling around and being difficult so then you just break the chip by pulling up a little bit to let the chips out and so they don't keep getting longer and longer and it's going around your drill bit and then you can keep drilling. Um, but I think it's important to think about feed pressure so you're not trying to be light, especially in something like steel, you really need to bear down on it and make sure that it's oiled because it's going to be getting hot. All right, so we're going to take this out, um, it's obviously off, loosen this and hold on to it so it doesn't just drop and break. This in. And I should have read up. Oh. Right, so you don't, we just made that hole with the center drill. And if we had to move uh, the table, then we would lose that position. So you really want to make sure. So actually, we're grabbing a little low, but I think that's, that's okay. Just, just a touch. So what we should have done is lowered the table a little bit so that we could get the drill bit in there. So we're biting it on the shank and not on the flutes of the drill bit. But we're mostly on the shanks. So I guess we'll tighten back up. Uh, and we're not touching the material, we're just close. Um, and then we're going to add a little oil. 
How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm all right. Cool. Uh, and we'll be good to go. So, use the oil. And just to reiterate, it's not touching. We definitely never want to start a power power machine wall. Uh, it's touching the material. It'll work piece. Um, and then just gonna go with nice fluid motion. Uh, um, so that's that's the deal. Uh, when you're using obviously different sizes, you need to make sure that you're paying attention to um, the speeds that you're cutting at. You need to make sure the workpiece is well clamped. You can also do other things, like let's say you're tapping something, you want to make sure that your threads are going in really straight. You can clamp it in this just to make sure as you're starting that it's really straight. You can also take the pulley off and just turn this by hand and it'll pull itself in. So that's a nice trick if you want to make sure that your tap pole is really straight. You can tilt the whole table. So you just turn, turn this wrench down here and then you can, you can spin and turn. There's a nut underneath here, or a bolt that you can loosen and that'll let you tilt. Um, when you're done, obviously you need to put the drill bits back, vacuum up, clean up the oil, uh, put the clamps away and Use this guy. So we're just going to drop the table down so we can get a bit out. And this tool does have a depth indicator, but it doesn't have a depth stop. So if you wanted to have a depth stop, you just need to figure out another method. The depth indicator is right over on this side, so you just say where you're starting, uh, and then going down by, by that amount. Makes any sense. It has millimeters on one side and inches on the other. Um, and that is the drill press. Thanks for watching.